1998, Sector Sport Watches invited me to make a solo attempt across the Atlantic Ocean. The original proposal was I would row the Mid-Atlantic, and then they changed their minds and decided they wanted to sponsor me to row the North Atlantic. And I thought, well, I'm crazy, but am I that crazy? And it turned out I was. The plan was it would take somewhere between 80 and 100 days, and I had food for 100 days. The boat was a self-writing design. But that first capsize was, was absolutely terrifying. When the boat's upside down and you're looking through the hatch and you're seeing fishes, your instinct wants you to swim away from the boat and you really can't. A number of ocean rowers have died. Their boats have always survived. This is the rowing vessel, American Pearl, American Pearl. My long range communication is down. I went for 78 days with no contact with anyone on land. Each day I would row about 12 hours a day. I would be at the oars when the sun came up. There were truly sublime moments out on the ocean alone. People sit at home in their living rooms and ask me why I do this. Sea turtles would come and visit, huge turtles, and they'd swim around for a while and then they would pass me. It's really demoralizing to be passed by a turtle. Uh, whales and dolphins and, and jellyfish, all sorts of creatures. Same storm, round number two. A little more violent. The storm that really hurt me was a hurricane named Danielle. And I capsized five or six times the morning the storm arrived. About 10 a.m. I've lost track of the number of capsizes. I seem to capsize about every 15 minutes. And I thought, okay, I, this is a really bad storm. I need to, I need to call for help. And so I went out to get my distress beacon, and I thought I came onto the North Atlantic Ocean in a rowboat. I have no right to risk the lives of other people to come and get me out of this wind. I got myself into this, and I'm, I'm going to live or I'm going to die on the whim of nature. When I decided not to set off the distress beacon, I really believed I was um, making the decision that I was gonna die alone on the ocean. Go ahead and chase your dreams. I mean, they don't always work out right, but go ahead and chase your dreams, you gotta do it. Each capsize was like a car crash. I was incredibly badly beaten. Two capsizes, and uh, last capsize, I took the rib off the top of my ceiling with my uh, back. I thought I couldn't take the pain anymore, and so I started to clip and unclip from a safety tether on my deck. I knew a wave was gonna come sooner or later, and the wave did and forced the boat well under the surface of the water, and I held the carabiner open, but the safety tether pulled it out of my hand and it closed, so I stayed with the boat. And the first word out of my mouth was coward. It was so demoralizing to know that that I had I had failed. I was broken, spiritually, emotionally, physically broken. We were creating the Muhammad Ali Center in Louisville, Kentucky, to honor the legacy of Muhammad Ali. And Muhammad was one of the few people on the planet who knew what it feels to uh, lose on a worldwide stage. Each time he visited, it was like, kid, you have to get up. And he had a real soft spot for broken people. When he knew I was ready, Muhammad Ali said, you don't want to go through life as the woman who almost rode across the ocean. So I went back. I did row across the mid-Atlantic Ocean, a kinder, gentler part of the ocean, but I was ultimately successful.